What is up YouTube, Dr. Wajah here, and today we're going to be talking about the anatomy of the heart, in particular, the heart valves. So let's begin. First, let's get our cardiac orientation down. We've got the right atrium, right ventricle, left atrium, and left ventricle. The red vessel at the top is the aorta, and the one in front of it is the pulmonary trunk. Please note that the pulmonary trunk is anterior to the aorta, and both of these great vessels are located between the right and the left atriums. Right, so we're gonna be talking about four valves today, two atrioventricular or AV valves and two semilunar or SL valves. Now, the thing is these valves are on the inside of the heart and I'm gonna have to slice open this heart with this really sharp knife here. Shing, boom. And we've got a nice coronal section of the heart and we can see all four valves very clearly from the picture. So the two atrioventricular valves we're going to be talking about are the tricuspid and bicuspid valves. The tricuspid valve is the one on the right and the one on the left is the bicuspid or mitral valve. The two semilunar valves we're going to be talking about are the pulmonary and the aortic valves. So the one in the pulmonary trunk is the pulmonary valve and the one in the aorta is the aortic valve. Now the AV valves are called so because they connect the atria to the ventricles. And the semilunar valves are called so because of their half moon shape. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a transverse section from right here, but we're going to view it as if we're viewing it from the top over here. Okay, so we're going to stand up top here and we're going to be looking at the heart. So this is what the heart looks like as if we're standing on top of it. This is the anterior side, this is the posterior side, this is the right side, this is the left side. And we said that the valve on the right was the tricuspid valve, the one on the left was the bicuspid valve, and both these valves had two semilunar, semilunar valves in the middle. We said that the pulmonary trunk was anterior to the aorta and therefore the pulmonary valve is anterior to the aortic valve. Right, so let's see how these valves work. So. The function of the heart valves is to ensure one-way flow of blood. What the valve does is, when it opens, it allows the blood to flow through it and once it closes, it prevents the backflow of blood. This is what the valves look like when they're opening and closing alternately during every contraction of the heart. Now, this picture was taken during systole. Systole is a time during which the ventricles are contracting and the atria are relaxing. When the ventricles contract, the AV valves, as you can see, are snapped shut. When the AV valves close, they produce the first heart sound called S1. This picture was taken during diastole. Uh, here you can see that the AV valves are open, but the semilunar valves are snapped shut. When the semilunar valves are closed, they produce a sound called S2. Now I'm going to play the heart sounds for you with, and you're gonna be able to see what the valves look like during an actual heartbeat. Right, so now let's look at the heart valves in a little bit more detail. Let's begin with the AV valves, namely the tricuspid valve. So from the name you can see tricuspid. So tri meaning three, cusp meaning three cusps. So the tricuspid valve has these three, one, two, three cusps. The anterior most cusp is the anterior cusp. The one behind it is the posterior cusp and the one closest to the septal wall is the septal cusp. Some literature calls these cusps leaflets as well because they kind of resemble a leaf. Now look right here. This is a point where the anterior and the posterior cusps are coming together. So the points at which the cusps join is called a commissure. So since this is this point is between the anterior and the posterior cusp, this is called the anterior posterior commissure. Look right here. This point is between the posterior and the septal cusp. So this commissure would be called the posterior septal commissure. And this commissure right here would be called the anterior septal commissure because it is in between the anterior and the septal cusps. Right. Now notice how each cusp has a free margin and a attached margin. So this is the free margin of the anterior cusp and this is the attached margin or the base of the anterior cusp. 
Likewise, this is the free margin of the posterior cusp and this is the base or the attached margin of the posterior cusp. So the free margin of these cusps face the ventricles and they're attached to chordae tendini. I'll explain what those are in a minute. And the attached margins are joined to the fibrous ring. Now you can see uh, this ring right here. This is the fibrous ring and it surrounds the entire tricuspid valve. Uh, there's also a fibrous ring surrounding the bicuspid valve. So the bases or the attached margins are attached to this fibrous ring and the free margins are attached to the chordae tendini. So what are those? Let's have a look. Now, um, this is the anterior view of the heart. You can see that this is the free margin of the cusp and these fibrous cords attaching to the free margin are the chordae tendini. So chordae means cord-like, tendini means tendon. So these are fibrous cords that look like tendons. They're attached to the free margins of the uh, tricuspid valve and bicuspid valve cusps on one end and on the other end they're attached to capillary muscles. Capillary means finger-like, so these are finger-like projections of the myocardium. The purpose of the papillary muscle and the chordae tendini apparatus is to keep the valves taut to prevent backflow of blood. Now let's have a closer look at the bicuspid valve. So you can see that there are two cusps, uh, that's where it gets its name from, bi meaning two, cuspid meaning cusps. So you can see that this is the anterior cusp, here we have the posterior cusp. So this is the point where the anterior and posterior cusps join. This is called the anterior lateral commissure. And this point right here would be called the posterior medial commissure. They're named after their specific locations. This location is a little bit more anterior and more lateral. And this position is a little bit more posterior and a little more medial. All right, let's have a look at the clinical aspects of the heart valves. Now, what can happen is the papillary muscles or the chordae tendini can get damaged. Now the mitral valve will become incompetent. If it's incompetent, it will allow a lot of blood to flow back from the ventricles into the atria. This will result in a situation called mitral regurgitation. Regurgitation means backflow. So blood is flowing in the backward direction. This is going to produce an abnormal sound on auscultation called a murmur. Another situation that can happen is um, if the mitral valve were to become narrowed, something like this. This would produce a situation called mitral stenosis. Here, this would result in very little blood reaching the ventricle and then the rest of the body. So this would also produce an abnormal sound on auscultation. Right, let's have a closer look at the semilunar valves, beginning with the pulmonary valve. So the pulmonary valve has three parts, as you can see. So this right here is the anterior cusp, then we have the right cusp, then the left cusp. So they've been named according to their position. So you can see this is on the right side, so it's the right cusp. This is on the left side, it's the left cusp. And this is the anterior one, so it's called the anterior cusp. Um, talking about the aortic valve, the aortic valve also has three parts. So you can see it has a right part, a left one, and a posterior one. Um, an easy way to remember all of this is, remember that the pulmonary trunk was anterior, so it has an anterior cusp and the aortic valve was posterior, so it has a posterior cusp. Like the AV valves, the semilunar valves also have free margins and attached margins. So if I'm talking about the right cusp of the aortic valve, this right here would be its free margin, and this right here would be its attached margin. You can see along the free margin, there is a central nodule. The remainder of the free margin on each side of the nodule would be called a lunule and the attached margin does not attach to a fibrous ring instead the attached margin attaches to the great vessel wall itself so if i'm talking about the aortic valve the attached margin of each cusp is attached to the wall of the aorta if i'm talking about the pulmonic valve then the um, base or the attached margins of these cusps are attached to the wall of the pulmonary trunk Right, let's differentiate between the pulmonary valve and the aortic valve just a little more. We've already discussed that the aortic valve is located posterior to the 
pulmonary valve but another way of distinguishing it from the pulmonary valve would be through these vessels right here so there is a right coronary artery and a left coronary artery coming out from the aortic valve which is a very distinctive feature now let's move on to the clinical aspect of the heart valves once again now in this example if for the aortic valve was diseased and did not remain competent then it would result in backflow of blood from the aorta into the left ventricle this would result in a situation called aortic regurgitation another situation or another example of valvular heart disease would be if the aortic valve were narrowed and would allow less blood to flow through it this situation would be called aortic stenosis the same is true for the pulmonary valve if the pulmonary valve became incompetent, it would result in pulmonary regurgitation. If the pulmonary valve became narrowed, it would result in pulmonary stenosis. And usually when you have a valvular disease on cardiovascular examination, you will be able to hear an abnormal sound called a murmur on auscultation. Right, so that about wraps it up for this video. In the next video, we're going to talk about the surface anatomy aspects of the heart valves. Guys, if you enjoyed this video, do like, share, and subscribe to my channel. Hit that bell icon so you don't miss any new videos. I'm making videos every week, and I hope to see you in the next one.